Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent in Only Yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Only yesterday we were living through one of the most hectic periods of American history, the gold rush of the fabulous 20s. It was the era that began with the return of an army from France and ended with an earthquake in Wall Street. And that nervous, exciting, dangerous decade, which seems only yesterday, is the setting for the unusual love story called Only Yesterday. Those were the years when the nation was singing, Yes, we have no bananas, and it ain't gonna rain no more. The years of prohibition, ticker tape fortunes, and Babe Ruth. A decade that began with women getting the vote and ended with motion pictures finding a voice. Unconventional years of speed, gaiety, and sudden change. The 20s completed the emancipation of American women, made them a factor in business, and yet seemed to create more beautiful women. In the 1920s, every woman became more conscious of how she looked, and toward the end of the decade, women acquired a silent but vital partner. Lux toilet soap to help them look their best. Only yesterday, adapted from the fine universal picture, is the story of Mary Lane, a woman of great depth and understanding, the kind of part to which Barbara Stanwyck always brings conviction and great emotional power. For the role of Jim Emerson, man of affairs in 1929 and soldier in 1917, we were fortunate enough to get George Brent out of the trenches at Warner Brothers, where he's starring in the fighting 69th. Now we go back to the 1920s to raise the curtain on Act One of Only Yesterday, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Mary Lane and George Brent as Jim Emerson, with Dorothy Peterson as Julia and Jacqueline Wells as Blanche. October 1929. Stock market crash. In a panic of selling that sweeps the country, the business world of America comes crashing down with a raw herd in a million factories and shops and in 30 million homes. Within a few short hours, huge fortunes and meager savings alike have vanished into thin air. Men struggle to explain, struggle vainly, against the financial monster that has turned to destroy them, and then sit back, crushed amid the wreckage of all their hopes and dreams. But uptown, far from Wall Street in the sunlit bedroom of a pleasant home, Another battle is being fought. A battle between life and death. By her bedside, the doctor keeps careful watch as a young woman sinks lower and lower into the darkness. At last, her eyes open. Her white hand plucks nervously at the coverlet. Doctor. Yes? Do you think I... Will I hold out until he gets here? Of course. Your boy's on his way here now. Mary, Jimmy left for school at 8 o'clock this morning. They're bringing him just as fast as they can. I know, but I'm afraid I may beat them to it. Mary, please Aunt don't. Aunt Julia. Yes, dear? Will you open the drawer of the night table? You'll find a letter there. A letter I wrote. Is this it? It's addressed to... To Mr. James Emerson. Mary. Yes. To him. Are you sure you want to do this? Very sure, Aunt Julia. I've had a long time to think about it, lying here. Everything's so clear to me now. And I want it to be like that for him, too. But will it help? Will it do any good now? I think it will. He has a right to know. And so has Jimmy. I couldn't tell him while I lived. That's why, when I found out I hadn't long, I... I was almost glad. Oh, Mary. Aunt Julia, I want you to promise me. See that he gets the letter after I'm gone. You will, won't you? 
Yes, I promise. Thank you. Oh, is that... Is that Jimmy? I'll go and see. I'll bring him right in if it is. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, darling, come here. What's the matter, Aunt Julia? They told me to come home from school right away, but they wouldn't tell me why. Mother is sick, Jimmy, and she wants to see you. Can I go in now? Wait. You see, dear, you've got to be awfully brave because she's very, very sick. Uh, Aunt Julia, is she... Is Mother going to die? Oh, Jimmy. Oh, my darling. Come in, dear. Hello, Jimmy. Come here, sweet. Oh, you are getting big. You'll be a young man soon, won't you? <laughs> oh, Jimmy, don't cry. Look, sweet. There are hard things we all have to face in life, dear, but they aren't so bad as some people make them out. Cowardly people. Getting very sick and even dying isn't so terrible, really. It just means getting along without each other for a little longer time than going away to school or... or Things like that. And so, dear, I've got to go away for quite a long time. And I want you to be as good a boy when you're big as you have been to mother when you were little. You will, won't you? <laughs> mother, Archie, oh, Archie. Oh, <laughs> Messenger, ma'am? Yes. I want you to take this letter. 114 Wall Street. Do it quickly, it's important. And deliver it personally to Mr. James Emerson. 114 Wall, yes, ma'am. Hello, listen. I've got to speak to him. Put him on the phone. Wait a minute. Fairchild, close that door. Yes, sir. Now listen. This is James Emerson speaking. Tell Mr. Brand I've got to speak to him. But he can't close me out. I, I've got to have a chance. I've... Hello. Hello. Oh, Mr. Emerson. Yes. I have never seen anything like it, sir. You never will again. And I'm going to let you in on something, fair child. Yes? You'd better go get yourself another job, if you can find one. Well, Mr. Emerson, you didn't lose everything. Why, that's impossible, sir. Yes. Well, speak to Brand sometime. He's through, too. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, sir. Oh, get out, will you? Yes, sir. I... Oh, your wife called, sir. She wanted to know when you'd be home. She's having a few people. Well, that's a great time for a party. She didn't happen to mention who was going to pay for it, did she? All right, all right, get out. Tell her... Tell her I'll be late. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. No, sir. Mr. Emerson is not home yet. Very good, sir. Thomas, was that my husband? No, ma'am. Someone calling him, ma'am. Well, did you hear from his office? Only that he'd be home later, Mrs. Emerson. And then a messenger came with this letter. He said he tried to reach Mr. Emerson at the office, and he wasn't there. Oh, good Lord. Well, call the office again. Tell them to... Never mind, he's here. Jim, for heaven's sake, what happened to you? I've been trying to reach you all day. Shall I take your coat, sir? Hmm? Oh, thanks. Where's Harry Adams? I thought he was coming with you. Eunice has been waiting for him. Is Eunice still here? Of course. Well, you'd better send her home. Adams is dead. Jim. Jumped out of the window an hour ago. Oh, no. Jim, what's happened down there? What is it? Send somebody home with Eunice. Then you better come in and see me in the study. You've got a lot to talk over. I'll be waiting for you. believe it. I can't believe it. Why didn't you tell me before? I didn't know before. But how could it happen? This morning we were rich. That was ten hours ago. And now you, you try to tell me we have nothing. What about the country house? This apartment? Gone. And all those bonds? They're and... gone too, everything. I haven't got a nickel. 
I see. I suppose that means I haven't anything either. I didn't say that. I suppose you'd like me to give up all my jewels, my pearls, the bracelet. No, I think you'd better keep the jewels. They're paid for. Well, I intend to keep them, Jim. It's the only thing I can keep out of this mess. I'm not going to give up everything and stop living in a furnished room. It may be very noble, but it's hardly practical. Not for me. You were warned about the market. Norman Harris warned you. He told me himself. But you wouldn't listen. No. You knew everything. Uh -huh. Seems I was mistaken. When are you divorcing me, Blanche? What? When are you divorcing me to marry Norman Harris? You wanted to for a long time. Now there's nothing to hold you back. You're horrible. No woman could live with you. You deserve anything you get. Anything. fixed the blind. What do you want? This. This letter, sir. It came by messenger. He said it was important. All right, all right. Get out, please. Yes, sir. Mr. James Emerson, personal, urgent. My dearest Jim, I have so much to tell you and so little time in which to say it. You may have to think back 10 or 12 years ago to recall, if you can, the girl who met you first at the Virginia Country Club in April 1917. Her name was... Twelve years ago, to recall, if you can, the girl who met you first at a dance in the Virginia Country Club in April 1917. Her name was Mary Lane. Do you remember now? You were Lieutenant Emerson then. And so very, very handsome in your new uniform. I remember seeing you come in the door. You stood there smiling. All of the girls had a little card with a soldier's name on it. And we were supposed to dance with that soldier and entertain him. Your name wasn't on my card. But I went over and spoke to you anyway. Good evening. Aren't you Lieutenant James Stanton Emerson? Oh, yes, I guess I am. Well, I'm supposed to look after you. Shall we dance? I don't know why not. Come on. Is this something new? We thought it would be nice. We try to keep the boys in the camp down here from getting homesick. And with great success, too. <laughs> Will you be going over soon? Can't tell. I hope so. You're quite anxious, aren't you? I suppose so. But I'm glad I didn't go before. Why? Why? Because if I had, I would have missed the chance to meet you. Oh, please, not so loud. Why? What have I done? Listen, I have a confession to make to you. Uh, what name is on your card? The one they gave you at the door. Well, let's see. It's... Uh... Miss uh, Amy Breckenridge, eh? Uh-huh. Well, that isn't my name. No? No, my name is Mary Lane. Amy drew you, but I traded her my captain for you. Oh, you did? Well, I'm afraid you haven't the proper respect for rank. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to be with you. Did you tell her that? Well, uh, she and Deborah, uh, that's my other friend, they think you and I know each other very well. well what gave them that idea? I did. What? Oh, don't be angry. Please don't. Oh, I'm not angry, but I am a little surprised. And that isn't all. I wore some flowers last week, and I, I told them they came from you. No. Well, say, how long has this been going on? Two years. Oh, I've been sending you flowers for two years. Oh, I... no, I mean it's two years since we met. Say, let's go out on the porch and go into this. Come on. Now, now, let's see. You say we have met. Well, you you couldn't exactly call it that. Well, where was it? An affair that Mrs. Abbott gave two years ago. I wasn't 17 yet, so of course you didn't notice me. I, uh, I gave you a sandwich. That was nice of you. And then I, I've seen you since. Where? When you were campaigning for President Wilson, my aunt, who lives in New York, was staying with us. She's a suffragette, you know, thinks women ought to vote. And uh, I went with her and... You made a speech. No. Oh, yes, you did. It was a wonderful speech. 
You were so sincere and handsome. and I tried to buy a picture of you, but they only had President Wilson and Vice President Marshall. <laughs> and you'd rather have had me? Oh, of course. Miss Lane, I love you. Oh. What's the matter? You kissed me. And I asked, what's the matter? Well, it was kind of a surprise attack. Well, you can't say you haven't known me long enough. Two years. You know, two years are surely good for a kiss. Especially such a gentle kiss. Mm, I think we'd better go back inside. Do you really want to? No. Then let's walk. Let's walk out there. All right. Shall I show you our golf links? Yes, that's a good idea. We'll walk the full course. Well, it takes two hours to go around. I, I think a little of the golf course will go quite away tonight. Oh, I may need more time to match, you know. Time? Yes, to catch up. I've got to get as well acquainted with you as you are with me. Oh, I see. Well, let's begin. I, I'm 19 now, but I told you that, and I, I live over there, see? Mmm, lovely old place. Mm, it looks better at night. What's your favorite flower? Violet. Who's your favorite moving picture actor? Blanche Sweet. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Aren't we? Mm -hmm. Now, just uh, one more now. Uh-huh. You know, a really personal one. Are you engaged or something? Oh, no. No? Why not? Oh, that's too personal. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad you're not. Just think of it. A beautiful old garden, Virginia moonlight, and us three. Three? Yes, you and me and fate. Three of us walking in the garden. Eden was never like this, Mary Lane. I, uh, I guess it couldn't have been. I guess... What? Well, I guess we better go back. We went back that night. But there were other times when we didn't. Do you remember how we used to meet whenever and wherever we could? All those beautiful short days and shorter nights until I learned to love you so that I couldn't live out of your sight. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't mine. What had happened was something beyond either of us. And then one night we'd been out for hours walking and never saying very much. You left me in the dark. My darling. Oh, no, Jim, not yet. Please don't go yet. I don't want to, ever. You know that. Yes. I've got to get used to it. You're leaving me because someday you... Oh, darling, I can't bear it. This is just goodbye for a few hours, but soon it'll really, be... Really, Mary, don't cry. Please. I do try, Jim. I try so awfully hard. When can I see you again? Well, I'm trying to get leave for next Saturday. Perhaps I'll get the whole weekend. If I do, Mary, would you marry me? Oh, no. No, we can't. Why not? Well, there's my family. They, they don't even know you. You do, Mary. Oh, yes, I do. I do. Then we'll get married. No one has to know about it. We'll keep it a secret. Just till I get back. I think it would be right, Mary. Oh, Jim. Oh, my sweet. If you only knew how happy you made me that night. How the days seemed to drag by until Saturday. And then we were married. It was a lovely secret, darling. The loveliest I've ever tried to keep. But I couldn't, of course. I told my mother and father one day at breakfast. I think they were a little angry. I was so happy I didn't. Just when are we going to meet this, uh, this paragon of yours, Mary? As soon as he has his next leave. Oh, dear. I can't even remember his name. What did you say it was? James Emerson, Mother. Lieutenant Emerson, 309th Infantry. And he's very tall, very dark, and... Very, very charming. <clears throat> yes, I'm sure he must be. Oh, Dad, please. Just because it all seems sudden to you, don't try to judge him till you've seen him. You'll like him. I know you will. Miss Mary. Yes, Abby. Your friend, Miss Deborah, here. Mary. Come in, Deborah. Oh, Mary, darling. Good morning, Mrs. Lane. Good morning, Mr. Lane. Good morning, Deborah. Sit down and have some breakfast, dear. Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Lane. I'm too excited to eat. Haven't you heard the news? What news? The men at the camp are leaving. Leaving? Yes. The orders came from Washington all of a sudden. Mary. Oh, I've got to go down there. I've got to go to the train. Excuse me. Mary, dear. Mary. 
Where's the 309th Infantry, please? What? The 309th! Oh, that's gone, miss. 309th left an hour ago. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. The curtain falls on Act One of Only Yesterday. Lonely months lie ahead of Mary Lane. Months of waiting for the tall lieutenant to return. But before we go on with Act Two, Mr. Ruick has something to say that concerns you. Our stars, Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent, will be back soon in Act Two. Now in this brief intermission, our trio and I want to talk to some special listeners in the audience. Yes, to the brunettes who wish they had red hair, the small girls who wish they were tall. In fact, every girl who wishes her features were the opposite of what they are. You know, your features don't really matter if your complexion is all it ought to be. And we know what we're talking about because we live in the town where one sees the loveliest girls in the world. And the one thing they have in common is soft, smooth skin, attractive skin. Out here there are red-headed girls And two there are brunettes with curls And some who are tall And those who are small And blondes whom you may think the sweetest of all Then sometimes it's blue eyes that win Or maybe a sweet dimple chin So you surely can see what your standard must be Every screen star has beautiful skin Here in Hollywood, you see blondes like Carol Lombard and Joan Blondell Dark-haired Dorothy L'Amour You see Anne Shirley, who is petite. Kay Francis, who is tall. They're all different types, yet these stars all have soft, smooth skin, and they all agree about complexion care. They use Lux toilet soap. Actually, nine out of ten screen stars use it. Why? Because this fine soap has active lather, smooth, rich lather, that removes every trace of dust and dirt gently and thoroughly. It gives you the protection of perfect cleansing. You want to be sure, too, that you're giving your skin wise care. So take the advice of the screen stars and get yourself a supply of gentle Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Make Hollywood's complexion habit your complexion habit. You'll find it pays. You'll do this, we hope. Use Lux toilet soap. This gentle white soap every day. Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Only Yesterday, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Mary Lane and George Brent as James Emerson, with Dorothy Peterson as Julia and Jacqueline Wells as Blanche. In his study, James Emerson sits at the desk, the letter lying open before him. As he reads on, his lips move without sound, but in his mind, he hears the long-forgotten voice of Mary Lane. And so we miss saying our last goodbye. But I said it to you anyway. Over and over to myself on the way home from the station. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, darling. Come home safe. I wonder how many times I said that in the next few months. At night, lying awake, or in the day walking through the fields where we had walked. And then all at once I knew, suddenly as if I'd been lifted to a great height and could see all the secrets of the world and life, I knew about the baby. I wasn't afraid. Even though you were so far away, I was happy. That's what made it so difficult with Mother. She couldn't understand. time, the only time anything has happened in our family to make us feel ashamed. Ashamed of what, Mother? I love Jim, and he loves me. And when he comes back... When he comes back? What if he doesn't come back? Mother, please, don't say those things. What am I supposed to tell people? That my daughter was married secretly. Do you think they'll believe me? I don't care whether they do or not. Tell them anything you want. Oh, Mother, I'm sorry that it had to be this way for your sake and Dad's. That's why I'm going up to New York. Yes, I suppose that's best. 
I've written to your Aunt Julia. She's expecting you. Thank you, Mother. I'll, I'll leave in a few days. That's it, lady? That's right. Carry up those bags, will you? Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. Well, here we are, Mary. Four rooms and bath. Otherwise, home. I think it's lovely, Aunt Julia. Well, it's what we call home in New York. But make no mistake, honey. Air shafts and elevators notwithstanding, New York is the place to live. It's in the air, it's electric, it's... <laughs> Anyhow, you're going to like it. Hear me? Like it. <laughs> you don't have to threaten me. I think I will. That's the girl. Here, give me your hat. Hmm. I just can't wait to see you bob. Bob? You mean cut my hair? Oh, child, women have cut more than their hair. That's just a kind of symbol. They've cut a lot of the old silly nonsense. They can get and hold good jobs nowadays. They aren't dependents anymore. And they've kicked the bottom out of that old bucket about woman's places at the kitchen sink. Well, at least you have, Aunt Julia. Now sit right there. We'll have tea in a minute. And I'll stop talking long enough to let you tell me a little more about what your mother wrote. Aunt Julia, are you terribly disappointed in me? Of course I'm not. Why should I be? From all I've heard, you're going to be very happy someday. You and your Jim Emerson. Oh, Aunt Julia, you make it so easy. I think I should have come up here before. Of course you should. Now tell me, does he know about the baby? No, I, I, I couldn't tell him. I didn't want him to have that to think about. It's hard enough for him now without worrying about me. I know. But you mustn't worry either, understand? Oh, I try not to. And then at night when I close my eyes, I... Oh, Aunt Julia, if I only knew... If I were only sure that he was safe and that he'd come back to me alive. He will, darling. He'll probably be here before the baby's born. By the way, how much time has he got? Well, he better come soon. It's in November. November 1918. I wonder what the horoscopes would have to say about that. <laughs> Yes. My name is Julia Warren. They called me from the hospital and told me to come. Oh, of course. Your niece is doing very well, Mrs. Warren. It's a boy. A boy? Oh, how wonderful. May I see her now? I think so. But don't stay too long. I won't. Thank you. Hello, darling. And Julia. How are you? I'm all right. Did they... Did they tell you? Yes, darling. Oh, boy. I knew it would be. Oh, I'm so happy, Aunt Julia. I can't stay very long, darling. But I've got some good news, too. Listen, do you hear anything? Yes, what is it? It sounds like a celebration. It is, dear. Well, I didn't know my baby's birthday was that important. <laughs> you hit on a great day for it, honey. Listen while I say it slowly. The armistice has been signed. Really signed. People are crazy with the news. The war is over, Mary. Oh. Now his father can come home. Yes, dear. Oh, I must get well fast, very fast. I've got to meet him when he comes back. Well, they can't all come on the first ship, you know. No. Good morning. Would you like to see your baby now? Oh, yes, please. Here you are, dear. Oh, thank you. Look at you, will you look at him? <laughs> he looks just like his father, doesn't he? <laughs> All but the uniform. <laughs> How long will it be, I wonder, before he can get back to us? Oh, a month. Or two or three. A month or two or three. I thought those months would never pass. And then your regiment came home. I was on the pier waiting. I'd been there since seven that morning. And then at last I saw you. How I got through.
through that crowd, I'll never know. Please let me through. Jim, I'm here. Over here, darling. Jim. Oh, Jim, darling. Hello. Oh, my dear. I, I'm so glad to have you back again. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be back. Jim, is that all we have to say to each other? I'm sorry, but I, I can't see... Please excuse me. Jim! There he is! Jim boy! Here! Hello, Father. My boy! My boy! Mother, dear. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. Good morning, hero. Hmm? <laughs> What's the matter? It's Blanche, my boy. Blanche? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Have I changed that much, darling? Come along, son. The whole family's waiting at the house. If we can find the car in this crush. And I want to hear all about everything. Jim, my darling, if you only knew how to Jim! <laughs> oh, Jim! Mary, is that you? I just gave the baby his bath and... Mary, what is it? What happened? Didn't you see him? Yes, I saw him. But... He didn't know me. He didn't... Oh, you're mad, darling. I ran up to him. He looked at me. He spoke to me, and he didn't know who I was. Mary, you can't think he didn't want to know you. Not if all you've told me about him is true. What else is there to think? His people were there, and... and a girl. It was probably very convenient. Mary, listen, you... You mustn't forget that you've changed, too. Your... well, your hair is different, your clothes are different... You look like another girl. That's a compliment to you, Julia. You've done me over with a vengeance. The Julia Warren shop guarantees to make you over so that the father of your baby won't know you. Mary, dear. Oh, Julia. If he were changed a thousand ways, I'd still know him. What are you going to do? I don't know. There are things you can do. You can go to him, tell him he has a son. Demand your rights. As a wife... Demand my... Oh, no. No, I have some pride, Aunt Julia. It isn't fair to me or my baby. If we have to demand... A... We don't want to. But you can't go on this way. Yes, I can. I'll wait. I know he'll come to us. I know it. How long will you wait, Mary? Until he has to recognize me. He will someday. Julia, will you do something for me? Of course, dear. Will you let me come into your shop with you? I'd be so glad if you would. I want to go to work. I've got to think about my son's future. Looking back at that time, 11 years ago, I, I hardly seemed to know myself. I was so very young so very foolish. For months, my pride wouldn't let me go to you. I kept myself busy in Julia's shop and with the baby. But I couldn't understand, and I, I couldn't forget. And then one night, I made my decision. I think Julia must have known, because just as I was leaving the apartment, she stopped me at the door. Oh, where are you going, dear? Dinner's almost ready. I, uh, I'm going out. Where, dear? Aunt Julia. I'm going to see Jim. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going to him and tell him everything. What's changed you so suddenly? Oh, it isn't sudden. Do you know where I was this afternoon? In front of his office, waiting for him to come out, hoping he'd see me and remember. And that wasn't the first time. There hasn't been a day since he came back that I haven't stood outside his office or near his house. Well, I... I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm going to him and tell him that I love him, that I... I can't go on without him. Wait a minute. I've got something to show you, Mary. What is it? I didn't want to show it to you, but... 
I think you'd better read this. Mr. and Mrs. James Stanton Emerson, who were married on Wednesday last, sailed today for... Mary. Mary, darling, please. Please don't look like that. It's... Mary! <laughs> That was act two of Only Yesterday. Mary Lane faces the future alone with her child. And we follow her search for happiness in act three. During this brief intermission, here's a friend of ours with a very unusual announcement. Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent return in a moment for act three of Only Yesterday. Sally, shall I tell them the news? Oh, yes, Mr. Ruick. And it is news, good news. Well, we have received so many letters from our loyal listeners for additional pieces of the allure pattern silverware which we offered some time ago on this program, that we finally just had to yield. Because, after all, we do feel a real debt of gratitude to our audience for their loyal support in purchasing Lux Toilet Soap regularly. And so, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, in cooperation with the world's largest silversmiths, offer you a very beautiful set of teaspoons in original Rogers silver plate, guaranteed by the International Silver Company. These teaspoons have been especially designed in an exclusive pattern called Allure. This pattern is new, dainty, and modern. Its delicate wheat motif sweeps gracefully from bowl to tip. It is not ornate, but has just enough design to add character to the sparkling beauty of the silverware. And of course, there is absolutely no advertising on the spoons in any way whatsoever. We knew that you would want enough to go around, so while the supply lasts, you may get six spoons, a complete half dozen, in the easiest way imaginable. And a written guarantee of satisfaction from the International Silver Company is enclosed with each half dozen spoons. Just let me read you part of what it says on the guarantee. Every piece is guaranteed to give satisfaction in family use and will be replaced without charge at any time it does not conform to this guarantee. Now these teaspoons are really valuable. The kind of spoons that you buy thoughtfully with the idea of having having them give you a lifetime of beauty and service. While the supply lasts, you can get these spoons simply by sending to Lux Toilet Soap, Meriden, Connecticut, 50 cents in coin and three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers and your name and address. Let me repeat that. Lux, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. This offer is good only in the United States. Be sure to send three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers and here's more good news. Now you can get knives, forks, soup spoons, complete table service in the lovely Allure pattern, not on sale anywhere else. Send for your teaspoons, and when you receive them, you will find a blank enclosed giving you illustrations of the other pieces available, with directions on how to obtain them, all at bargain offers, all with original Rogers guarantee. Now let me repeat. Send three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers. Print your name and address clearly on a piece of paper. Wrap 50 cents in coin in the paper and mail to Lux Toilet Soap, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. That's Lux Toilet Soap, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. This offer is good only in the United States. And now we pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We continue with Act Three of Only Yesterday. In Jim Emerson's study, time is forgotten. Poring over the letter from Mary Lane, Emerson's mind tries vainly to pierce the darkness of years long past. The letter goes on. How can I tell you of the ten years that came after? It would be wrong to say I was always unhappy, for there were times when I wasn't. Times when I looked at little Jimmy growing up so straight and strong and knew that no matter what had happened, he would still give me him. He was 10 years old last November, 
and I had him entered in a private school. It was strange not having him with me, for somehow he had taken your place. But then he came home for the holidays, and I was happy again. Mother! Mother! Hello there. Can I come in? In a minute, darling. Let me finish dressing. Okay. Happy New Year, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Aunt Julia. Happy New Year. What's in the package? My new dress. I'm going to be beautiful tonight if it kills me. Where's your mother? Is she getting ready? Uh-huh. We just got home a little while ago. We went to the doctor's. Oh? What did he say? Mm, nothing much. Gave me a lot of tests and stuff, and then he said I can play football all I want next year. Oh, that's wonderful, Jimmy. Then you're all right, aren't you? I guess so. But you know what? He told Mother it was her who needed to be careful. What? I heard him. He said something about she was working too hard or something. She ought to take things easier. What do you suppose that means, Aunt Julia? I don't know. She has been doing too much. I, I've told her time and time again, but it doesn't do any good. Do you suppose it helped she didn't come to the store sometimes? I mean, like, uh, take a vacation. Yes, if, if she'd do it. But just try and make her stay away. All right now, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy, don't tell her you told me, will you? I'll call the doctor myself. I won't tell her. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Gee, you look keen. You're going out, huh? Uh-huh. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. That's good. I just want to come in and say Happy New Year. That's all. Mm-hmm. Mary! Oh, that dear. man's here. Tell him I'll be right there. Jimmy, Mother's got to rush. Mr. Reynolds is here, and I haven't even finished my makeup yet. Look out, darling. Oh, you don't need makeup? You'll get by without it. You think so? Just the same. I'm not going to take any chances. Say, Mother, I've been wondering... What about? Mr. Reynolds. Are you going to marry him? What a question. He hasn't asked me. Go on. No, really. Well, why don't you ask him? Jimmy, ladies don't ask gentlemen to marry them. Oh, I can fix that. How'd you like me to ask you for it? Why, Jimmy, what an idea. I don't mind. I'll just go and say to him, look here, Mr. Reynolds, I want to know... Jimmy, if you dare to do a thing like that. <laughs> why, you little limp. Gee, did you look scared. Come on now, kiss me goodnight. <laughs> Night, Mother. Have a nice time. I will. And don't forget, we've got a date tomorrow. Mary! Coming. You'll have to entertain him for a while. I'm not ready. All right. Hello, David. Let me look at you. Mm, you're very lovely tonight, Mary. Thanks. It's your flowers. Sit down, David. How's Jimmy? Well, I think he's getting beyond me. He threatened to embarrass us horribly tonight. Is that so? Yes, he was going to speak to you about your intentions. No. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I suppose you told him how many times I've asked you to marry me. No, I, I didn't think that was quite the thing. Mary. What? How many more times am I going to ask you? David, you're very sweet. I'm very much in love with you, Mary. I guess I'll always be, no matter how many times you turn me down. David, before we could even think about it, there'd be so much I'd have to tell you. You couldn't find a more interested listener. Well, go on. No, it's the wrong time, David. Will there ever be a right time? Yes, I... I'll tell you next year. Next year? Well, it's only about four hours. Well, that's right. It's... Mary, is that a promise? It's a promise, David. I don't know exactly what I'd planned to tell David. I had no fear of the truth because I knew he loved me. But that night, just as the new year was coming in, and the crowds were milling through the streets. I met you again. I'd become separated from David and Julia, and then suddenly there we were, you and I, face to face in the crowd. I'm sorry, there doesn't seem to be very much that one can do about this. No, it's uh, quite all right. Anything the matter? No, I just... Well, I've lost my friends, and there's not much chance of finding them. Shall I get you out of this? Please. There. This is better, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Do you think you'll get home all right? Yes, I'm quite sure. I mean, I... Uh... Well, I don't think I'll go home just yet. Well, would you care to have a drink with me and see the New Year in together? I'd like to very much. Oh, thanks. I'm alone, too. But, uh... Yes? Uh, I'm sorry. Haven't we met before? 
Have we met before? Well, it does sound rather trite, doesn't it? But I didn't mean it as an opening. Shall we go? Go right in. I'll mix another drink for you. No, thank you. It's getting rather late. Oh, you can sit down for a moment. Please. It's all been so very lovely. Tell me, is this some friend's apartment? Why, no. It's mine. But this isn't where you live. Yes. What made you say that? <laughs> I never saw a place so completely without the feminine touch. Oh, well, this happens to be the place where I live. The other place is where I sleep. You know, breakfast and get my mail. Oh, I see. May I use your phone? Of course, there it is. Thanks. Want me to go somewhere while you talk? No. I warn you, I may listen. You can hear what I have to say. Hello? Hello, darling. Oh, Mother. I just wanted to wish you Happy New Year again. Happy New Year to you, too, Mother. Thanks, darling. Say, anything happen tonight? What? You know, did he say he wanted to marry you? Oh. oh, no, dear. Yes, very soon, I think. Good night. Good night. Sounded very intimate. Was it a man? You'd like to know? Yes, I think I'd like to know everything about you. Who you are, where you live, what you do. I'm someone you met tonight in the crowd. Someone to whom I'll be eternally grateful. Why? Well, you see, I was lost tonight, too. Oh, not really lost. I mean, I went out for a walk about 10 o'clock. I, I was pretty lonely until we bumped into each other. You're married, aren't you? Yes. Don't you usually celebrate New Year's Eve with your wife? Oh, I'm sorry. I, that was the wrong thing to say. Forgive me. No, it's quite all right. I'm afraid it's no great secret anyway. All married people aren't happy together, you know. Tell me, are, are you unhappy? Yes. I never told that to anyone before. It's funny that I should tell you. A perfect stranger. Are you? Somehow I feel that you're not. A stranger is someone you can't talk to except about the weather or the market. But I can talk to you. May I see you again, please? Isn't life complicated enough? Do we have to tangle ourselves up willingly with our eyes open? I don't understand you. Why can't I see you? Because I... I don't know. I, I just think we'd better not. I'm sorry. You speak as though you'd been greatly disappointed once. I was. I'll have to go now. Good night. Good night. Well? That picture on the table there. Oh, my regiment. Or what was left of them. It was taken just after the armistice. And this is you, isn't it? Yes, I'm not looking very well. I'd just come from the hospital. You were wounded? Yes, a head injury. Not too serious, but it fogged me up a little. I used to forget things. Forget? Uh-huh, names and faces. They had to tell me who I was when I came out of the hospital. Then I pieced a lot of it together for myself. Oh, I never mentioned it to my people. I asked them to send me pictures from home. You know, snapshots of themselves, the house, my friends. They never suspected, of course. And then, gradually, things began to come back to me. But not everything. There are still some blanks. Empty pieces in my life that I'll probably never know about. Go on. Well, that's all. But that's why, when I meet people sometimes, I, I have a strange feeling of having known them before. Something happening long ago that I, that I can almost remember. And if they are people you've known, and if they tell you things... Things that have happened, things that are true. Do you remember then? Does it come back to you? No, not always. Sometimes I just have to take their word for it. You take their word. <laughs> Life is very complicated for you too, isn't it? It hasn't been easy for you. Oh, I wasn't trying to gain your sympathy. I know. But I'm glad you told me. So very glad.
Mary. Mary. Is that you? Mary. Yes, David. Where have you been? I thought you'd never get home. We hunted all over for you. I'm sorry, David. I... I've been walking. In all the snow? Yes, I... I had to think I... Mary. Mary, what's the matter? You... You look so strange. David. Yes? I'm sorry, David. I can never marry you. Is that what you were thinking about? Yes, that and other things. It wouldn't be fair to you, David. I, I like you too much and... Well, you see, I'm still in love with someone else. I didn't marry David. I couldn't. And I told him the truth. That's why I'm writing this letter to you, Jim, my darling. I've been so sick, so very tired. I had to write the words I couldn't speak. I love you, Jim. I love you now as I've loved you always. And I have a feeling that we can be happy again, somewhere. When you receive this letter, I shall be gone. But your son will be here. Please come and see him. And if there's a place from which I can watch, I'll be there. And I'll be happy. Goodbye, Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, Goodbye my, sweet. my sweet. Now I can call you mine again. Yours, Mary. Jim! Jim, let me in! Jim! Come in, Blanche. Jim, I thought you'd never open the door. Park said you'd locked yourself in. I was afraid you... I was afraid... No, not now. It's all changed now. I've got something to live for. You mean you've heard from the office? Is everything all right, then? No, it's just the same down there. But something has happened. I... I can't explain it. Something has happened to me, too, Jim. I think I ought to tell you that I've taken you at your word. I've already told Norman that I'm going to marry him. Yes, I think that would be best. Is that all you have to say? That's all I can say now. There's some place I've got to go. Someone I've got to see. I thought our marriage meant more to you than that. Oh, Blanche, let's not pretend any longer. We've known for a long time what was happening, both of us. Try to be happy. I'm going to try. She gave me the letter to send to you after she was gone. I sent it this afternoon. Why didn't she tell me before? She was afraid you wouldn't remember. That night I met her, I... I tried to remember then and couldn't. But there was something, something inside of me that never forgot, never could forget. May I... May I see my son, please? Come in, Jimmy. Yes, Aunt Julia. Jimmy, darling, this man is... Well, he has something to say to you. Thank you. Come here, son. We... We've got a lot to weather, haven't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> but we'll do it, won't we? I mean, the two of us, together. I, I don't know who you are. You will, son. We're going to know each other very well, if you'll let me. You see, I'm your father, son. I have a feeling that we can be happy again, somewhere. And if there's a place from which I can watch, I shall be there. 
And I shall be happy. Today is a short journey from only yesterday. And Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent are returning to our microphone. Did you like going back to the 1920s, Barbara? Oh, I like the play very much, but I'm pretty happy with things the way they are now. I think I'd rather live in the 1930s. You know, we did this story more or less on its anniversary. Yeah, that's right. The stock market crash happened just ten years ago last week, or the week before, didn't it? <laughs> yes, but I, I don't think anyone is celebrating that anniversary, George. <laughs> no. I suppose not. But you know, this is a sort of a reunion for Barbara and me. Uh huh. We made three pictures together about five or six years ago, and then George went out of my life forever. Until tonight. Yeah, well, uh, this is a sort of a reunion, and it's been very enjoyable. In fact, I always enjoy the Lux Radio Theater. Such nice, clean work. <laughs> Sounds like a compliment to our product. Well, I meant the working conditions are so good here. You know, you've got a nice dry stage and air conditioning and all that kind of thing. I've been having a tough run of luck in pictures lately. Oh, didn't it rain pretty hard or something and the rains came? <laughs> Why, I worked for days in water up to my neck, and now it's mud. The fighting 69 is fighting its way through the mud. You know, every morning I punch a time clock and jump into a mud hole. <laughs> well, just in case the Chamber of Commerce is listening, perhaps you'd better explain that it's artificial mud. Well, you know, I thought it might take the technical department a good many weeks to find an acceptable substitute for mud. But they solved it one day. Yeah, they poured some water on a pile of dirt and got mud. <laughs> I guess the simple way is usually the best way to do anything. And that's a rule that applies to complexion care, too. I found that regular use of Lux toilet soap is an excellent way to help keep one's skin soft and smooth, the way you want it to be. And it's a simple way, too. I've used it for years. But, oh, I, I haven't heard you mention what the Lux Radio Theater show for next week is, C.B. Next Monday night, we're going to present The Champ. And our star will be Wallace Beery, in the famous role he played on the screen. And in addition to Wallace, we'll have Josephine Hutchinson and Noah Beery. The champ is a drama of the devotion of a father to his son. A father who was a true champion. As I remember the picture, C.B., Wallace Beery gave a great performance. Well, good night now. Good night. Good night. <laughs> There'll be ringside seats for everyone at the large theater next Monday night. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Wallace Beery in The Champ with Josephine Hutchinson and Noah Beery. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is Melville Roy inviting you to enjoy the popular Lux Daytime program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. What would you do if a fine man you admired fell under the spell of a desperate and alluring woman? Hear tomorrow's episode of this thrilling story. For the time and station, see your newspaper. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. And don't forget to send 50 cents, three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers, and your name and address to Lux Toilet Soap, Meriden, Connecticut. And you'll receive six beautiful original Rogers Silver Plate teaspoons in the original Allure pattern. Heard in tonight's play were Eric Burtis as Jimmy, Gavin Gordon as David, Gloria Gordon as Mrs. Lane, Victor Rodman as Mr. Lane, Tony Tree as Deborah, Harry Walker as Butler, James Eagles as Messenger, Emma Saunders as Mother, Frank Martin as Soldier, and Bernice Pilot as Abby. Barbara Stanwyck has just finished the Paramount picture Remember the Night, soon to be released. George Brent is currently seen on the screen in The Old Maid. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox, where he directed music for drums along the Mohawk. The Universal Picture Only Yesterday was based upon the work by Frederick Lewis Allen, published by Harper Brothers. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.